personal hell to bring us to this moment of justice. And, the, and for the more than 100 women who have spoken of their traumatic experiences with Weinstein to date, I also stand for those, for whatever reasons, have had to remain silent. And I know that speaking out about rape and sexual assault is difficult, if not impossible, for poor women, women of color, disabled women, and trans women, like my sister Alexis. And I want to say to those women, change is coming. We are your sisters. Justice has prevailed today in this case, and I hope you'll see more of it. Thank you. Next up, we have Melissa Sage Miller. Yesterday's outcome not only represents justice for the women directly involved, but also, hopefully, some measure of vindication for all people who have been sexually abused. Because every victory like this is a critical step in the direction of a more just future. In a time when no less than the President of the United States is a sexual predator, and countless other predators continue to persist. Yesterday's verdict was a loud and unwavering statement, a cry for accountability, plain and simple. We need to witness accountability at these highest levels to ensure that no one is above the law. We may never know how many women have been assaulted by Harvey Weinstein and other predators of his kind, but I want yesterday's verdict to be a beacon of hope for all those intent on sharing their truth, as well as those that may doubt their power to come forward. I am in awe of all the women who testified in New York, as well as my fellow violence breakers. Thank you for inspiring me to come forward and to legitimize my experience as a survivor and silence breaker. Thank you. Next up, we have uh, Lisette Geis. Hi, my name is Louisette Geis. Harvey, you messed for the wrong women. We will see you here in Los Angeles, where hopefully your conviction will leave you in jail for life. And to the rest of the 4% of the predators who create 91% of the problem, we are coming for you. As the lead plaintiff in the class action against Harvey Weinstein and as the chairwoman of his bankruptcy, I learned a lot about our judicial system. I learned how archaic our judicial system is in trying these cases. Only one to three percent of predators even get convicted. Who are raped and sexually harassed and actually receive a settlement are then taxed because that harassment and rape is not seen as a personal injury. As a woman who is a survivor and good to many of these women who have been raped and harassed, I can tell you it is a personal injury for life. It is now time to create and change laws that rise up to our enlightened society that we seem to be becoming. If we are going to ask women and men and transgender, if we're going to ask everyone to stand up and rise up, then we need to ask our laws to rise up to support them. Again, it is documented that only 1 to 3 percent of these rape cases that they get convicted. So, Harvey, congratulations on being in the top percent once again, and we will get you in L.A. Thank you. Next up, we have Louise Godbold. Good morning. Thank you all very much for being here. This is the best poll in New York, right? Um, I'm going to read this to you. The verdict yesterday helped restore my belief that there are very many decent people out there. Decent people, like the ones who sat on the jury. Decent people who read the coverage about Harvey and say, I never treated a human being like that. That is what we collectively as a society reclaimed yesterday, a sense of decency. We drew a line in the sand and said, exploitation and bullying is not okay. It is not 
what we want our children to believe is normal and acceptable behavior. We upheld the right of every individual to autonomy over their own body, the right to not be bullied and abused in the workplace. This was never about Harvey. This was about what we, as a society, will tolerate. And I, for one, am glad that the message is clear. Hurt other people, and there will be consequences. Your power and money will not protect you. Next up, we have Lauren Savan. Hello, everyone. Um, this is a great day, uh, not just for all of us up here. Um, many of us didn't think this day would come. We were actually really nervous and holding our breath because there was a very good chance that he would walk. The fact that he hasn't shows that things are changing. This is a new day. The jury saw through all of the BS and the lies that his defense team tried to put out there. You know, his defense lawyer called the Me Too movement, it was out of control. It's run amok. It was a witch hunt. You can't just believe all women. We have to try them in a court of law. Well, they did. And the jury believed the women. I mean, two convictions. He's now a felony rapist. That is huge, especially when you heard about the statistics that we said just told you about. Uh, look, this wasn't necessarily a referendum on Me Too, but Harvey Weinstein is the reason Me Too exists. The, the sheer numbers of us, there are over a hundred women with accusations against this man. I mean, maybe you can't believe one woman, but you can believe over a hundred of them with very similar stories. And finally, we believe that maybe the criminal justice system is catching up with the cultural shift that we've seen in the last few years. So this is a celebration for us, for the women, for all of the journalists that put their jobs on the line to tell our stories. Uh, but most of all, it's a win for all of us because no one should, should get away with what he's done in the last 30 years without accountability. And now it looks like the tide has... Thank you. Next up, we have Lauren O'Connor. In 2015, when I was an employee at the Weinstein Company, I filed a memo citing the assaults of other women and workplace abuse. In 2017, that memo became the cornerstone of the article that first broke the story on Harvey Weinstein. In that memo, I wrote, I am a 28-year-old woman trying to make a living and a career. Harvey Weinstein is a 64-year-old, world-famous man, and this is his company. The balance of power is me, zero. Harvey Weinstein, 10. Yesterday, the scales of justice restored the balance of power. They tipped in favor of survivors of assault and workplace inequity. The balance of power is now survivors and silence breakers, 10. Abusers and predators, zero. This verdict will change the history of future generations for years to come. To all who came forward, to all who bore testimony yesterday and before, I thank you for your solidarity. May we persist and their voices continue to be heard. Next up, we have Larissa Gomes. today because I'm supported by all these brave women who came forward, all the women who may not want to come forward, all of the journalists who broke the stories, all the lawyers and organizations who continue to fight for justice of vic for victims every single day. Harvey Weinstein's conviction does give me a sense of peace. Justice was served and I'm so grateful for the civic duty displayed by these jurors. Now we can turn our attention to the upcoming trial here in LA. We have an opportunity to build on this momentum. 
this verdict is not everything, but it's significant in so many ways. And let me explain what I mean. In my mind, I am no longer trapped in a hotel room with Harvey Weinstein forever because I am here now with all these fierce women. After his rape conviction, standing here reflecting on the irony that he will be the one who now feels the fear of being trapped. I'm not shaming myself anymore because the shame belongs with him. I'm not silent anymore because I'm doing what I can to ensure that he can't silence one more woman. I won't fear the backlash surrounding this anymore because I have turned it into purpose. I'm not accepting the system that he created from abuse of power and intimidation because I, along with all of these women here, are too busy tearing it down. Speaking out collectively changed things, and this right here is the culmination of courage. This trial has become a symbol around the world, and we've seen the manifestation of some of the deepest issues in our culture. We can open our minds to the nature of trauma and victimhood. We can understand the nuances surrounding cases like this, and that is progress. My hope is that this verdict and these trials serve as the ultimate wake-up call, that our justice system and culture will reflect the safer world that we all deserve to live in. We have Catherine Kendall. It's a big day. Um, I am one of the many women that was targeted by Harvey Weinstein and the agency that he hired, the Black Cube. And every day that went by that he was not in jail, I feared that I would once again be targeted. It's so important that women continue to come forward and break their silence, so that predators like Harvey can be put away. Harvey banked on our fear. He bet on our silence, and he collected for many, many years. But today, he lost the bet, and we're the ones winning. And I am proud to stand with my sisters and keep fighting for a better day for all survivors. Next up, we have Jessica Barth. Hi, everyone. Um, my main reason for being here today is to stand alongside these incredibly brave women who have become sisters to me in this two-year journey. Um, we've given each other strength, friendship, and encouragement this entire time. Couldn't be more proud to know everyone up here. <laughs> I would like to say something to Donna Rotano. Um, I want to speak for the one in three women and the one in four men who are victims of sexual violence. And I want to say that it has nothing to do about putting yourself in that position. <sighs> Accepting a meeting with a Hollywood icon who's produced every single independent film that you grew up loving, that made you fall in love with acting, that encouraged you and inspired you to come to work in this industry to begin with, is not putting yourself in that position. Being alone in your apartment and having that same person barge into your door and rape you is not putting yourself in that position. This is a man that Meryl Streep once called God. You would think if Meryl Streep referred to him as God, maybe you could trust him. Who does deserve and who has put himself in that position is Harvey Weinstein. And it is my hope that victims everywhere can look to this verdict, this guilty verdict, 
and have hope and uh, um, courage to come forward and know that you will be believed and your predator will be brought to justice. I really, really believe that this is a brand new era in the world of sexual violence. If somebody is powerful with the resources, the unlimited resources that Harvey Weinstein has, can be brought to justice, anybody can. So I, I really encourage victims to come forward and um, put the shame and the blame on their perpetrator and take it off themselves. Thank you. Last but certainly not least, we have Caitlin Delaney. After Caitlin speaks, we're gonna open it up for some questions. Hi, good morning. Um, it's nice to see you all, and I came here uh, to speak with you, but um, the real reason I got out of bed this morning and prepared a speech was um, to be with the women that are behind me. Uh, we all had busy days yesterday and weren't able to be with each other, um, and um, I wanted to see them because they have been my support. They've held me up, they've given me strength, and together we have made this happen. And along with all of them, I, I want to thank the women who spoke in this trial. What they went through was horrific. And, um, and I just thank them for their bravery. And um, I'll just go like this. And then, <laughs> oh, thank you, Lauren. Thank you, sister. Um, I just want to say, you know, the skies are blue, we're in Los Angeles, it's, and it's a new day, it's a new dawn. I thank the state of New York, I thank the jurors, I thank the prosecutors for bringing in a conviction on two counts of rape, and Harvey Weinstein, a reporter asked me yesterday, um, how do you think Harvey Weinstein will be known now, what do you think his legacy will be, and I, will, I said, well, it certainly won't be for the movies that he made. It will be as a convicted serial rapist. And, um, you know, this, this is profound. This is, this is precedent setting. And um, since I couldn't see my sisters yesterday, I can tell you that the best part of my day was going to the grocery store and seeing a little girl running around. And, and I said, the, the world has changed. You will have a different world because of what happened today. It is not the same, it will never be the same for survivors everywhere. And as we move to the Los Angeles case, which is equally important, and um, there, there will hopefully be more of us that can testify to prior bad acts, because from what I understand, the statutes here, um, there's more leeway to bring in um, witnesses. And um, I certainly hope you hear from all of us and many of us in that trial as well. And um, um, uh, I don't know, I'm just so happy uh, to be here with my sisters, as I said. And thank you all for listening to us. Thank you. who referred in an Oscar speech or, uh, like he was God. And at the time when she said that, he was in Hollywood. So that's what she meant. She's a part of Time's Up. She's very supportive of all the women here. What do you think about the current, there's a campaign by street artists that said she knew that that uh, something was going on now. What do you want to 
I just want to say my intention was not to go against Meryl Streep. My intention was to say that if someone as uh, revered as Meryl Streep was saying that he was God, you wouldn't think twice about having a meeting with him. Meryl Streep's amazing. <laughs> and she's a part of Time's Up, and she's very supportive of all the women. Okay, thank you. We're going to go, yes, ma'am. Sorry, the, the Los Angeles District Attorney has to present his um, list of potential witnesses to the court before, the, and the court will decide. I'm sorry, I, I didn't hear the question. I do, I do hope I can't say I'm just, I'm just speaking to the law here in Los Angeles. Um, there's more room for us to speak in, in court. Yes, ma'am. I want to say something. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry. I want to say something about the street art um, in Merrill Street. I've seen that street art. I don't know where it came from, but it angers me that the target would be a woman. Um, it's just taking it right off of Harvey again and maybe the men that were complicit. But to think that because she did a movie with him means that he knew all of his gossip is preposterous. He was probably busy doing her work and um, people can have things hidden from them. So I'm not sure what street artist did that, but um, I don't think it was Banksy. And I want to add that just because a man abuses hundreds of women doesn't mean he abuses every woman he's ever worked with, so it is possible for women to have worked with him and been treated with respect by him. I'm sure Mer Meryl Streep didn't know. She's been very supportive. When he tried to use her in the press against us, he came out and repudiated it, so let's not make this about the women. Yes, please. So I understand his lawyers are going to appeal the case. Are you worried that he's going to get out while this is going on? This is what his lawyers have said that he's going to be out while they appeal this case because of his health problems, and they're going to uh, request that. Um, yeah, that's that's terrifying. I think that we should all take a moment here to realize that if this wasn't Harvey Weinstein, if this was just anyone that didn't have money and power and couldn't afford world's best attorneys. Um, they would be in jail. They would not get to go to the hospital or, you know, remit. I mean, if you're convicted of two felonies in New York, you're remanded to jail. That's typically what happens. And if he's not, then he's getting special treatment. I just have one, one, one quick thing I want to say about the law. We have to remember that um, the case in New York cannot be appealed on the facts. The jury decided on the facts, and those are the facts that he was found guilty beyond a reasonable doubt. Um, but they, they can feel appeal on procedure, so I, I imagine that's what they're going to try to do. I don't, I don't think they, yeah, I think you, those are questions that you should ask for the DA in, in L.A. I think it's a great question. I have a question. What did you feel when you heard that he was going to the hospital with chest pain? I personally felt like he's a very good actor. Um, you know, this is a man who knows how to manipulate the press, and clearly he's done so with his uh, iconic walker now. So let's just say, you know, I know women who are literally dying, uh, who are also victims, and I say let's give, you know, them the help, and if he's got to go to the hospital, it should be in jail, that kind of hospital, not a special uh, hospital where he has his own suite. And I thought maybe he's experiencing a panic attack, you know, something all of us have experienced for decades after his abuse. Yes, um, So you guys, I mean, a lot of you had to go through hell to get this out, and, like, it almost didn't come out. I mean, there was just how long it took and how, like, you know, just reading about how hard it was to get it out. Like, aren't you guys, you guys are obviously optimistic, but is there a little bit of fear that maybe things wouldn't change? 
talk to this. Uh, the story almost didn't come out because of Harvey Weinstein's tactics, as you saw in the courtroom, how far he would go to shut this story down. He did it in every way, shape, or form, from the top of the NBC to going after all the journalists, spying on a lot of us, hiring black Cuban Mossad. He did everything he could to sh make sure this story didn't see the light of day, and thank God it did. Yes, ma'am, down there. this whole experience is that I didn't feel joy just for myself, but I really felt the women that I've come to know in the last two and a half years, I felt their joy, and that quadrupled. So it was a really emotional day, and it was a victory. I felt incredibly victorious. on that and, and my feeling is maybe a little bit more controversial but I was talking with my husband when the verdict came out and I was talking with many of the women here um, texting back and forth and but when you really think about it that th this person is going to spend the rest of his life in jail probably um, for me that it was a complicated feeling because it, to wish that on somebody is a really um, intense feeling I, I'm thrilled that, that he will be because there has to be there has to be consequences. My husband told me there has to be consequences. The rape is the, the worst thing one of the worst criminal acts that you can inflict upon someone. So there has to be consequences. So while I don't feel joyful about thinking about him rotting away in a, in a jail cell as I wouldn't do for any other human being, um, I'm I am I am thrilled that he's being held accountable and uh, Hopefully, this will be a precedent so other people will be held accountable as well. I'm going to jump back to how I felt reading the verdict. Uh, tremendous gratitude. While he was not convicted on every charge, the jury stood up and said one time is enough. It does not matter if you worked with someone. It does not matter if you went on to have a consensual relationship. One time is too many. I can speak to this because I'm the, the lead plaintiff in the class action. 
Um, the, the truth is no, and I don't think there's really ever any compensation, if you will, to fill this void of sadness and uh, depression that many women have gone through, through their experiences with Harvey. That being said, um, I, I want to say that myself and a large team of women, many standing behind me, fought tirelessly uh, through the bankruptcy, which was a very strategic thing he did for TWC. So when we get people who blame us for how much money that we actually were allowed to get, you must understand that this is unprecedented for a bankruptcy, that many of the unsecured creditors stepped aside. You have to understand, $250 million he owed, and those people stepped aside to allow us as victims to get this money. So that is huge, and I thank them with my you know, deepest sincerity. Um, and in addition, I mean, since there is nothing that's going to ever fill this void, it allows, though, these women to actually get something. So I feel personally uh, happy that they will get something and that all women, because this is the class action, can step up, whoever was harmed by Harvey, to get something. And we have a special master who decides what that amount will be. I just also wanted to say about the, the civil case, which I'm also a part of, um, the New York State's Attorney General also brought a civil case against Harvey and the Weinstein Company and the Miramax Company for the women that he harassed and abused that worked for him. And we're negotiating the settlement on all of their behalf because the, the victim should not bear the cost of the crimes. And um, so I just wanted to make sure you were all aware of that. Okay, thank you. All right, we're going to have an We're going to. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm a slow processor. Well, I've only just come up with my answers to some of the earlier questions. Um, but I did want to say, because everyone asks us, how do you feel? How do you feel? And the truth is, most of the time, it's very hard to describe how you feel because you're living in this state of heightened tension and you're really not in connection with your body and your feelings. But I think for me, it was like we've been living in this alternative universe. So I was attacked by Harvey in 1991. That's a heck of a long time ago. And I had to be quiet about it for so long. And so many women here were quiet, either from fear or from shame or from feeling like we didn't have a chance to stand up against this man. And so you would see him at award shows with a beautiful women draped on his arm. And you would think, oh my God, I know that that man is a predator. And so yesterday was like those two universes came together. And I think that's why it's hard to describe how it feels, because it was like a seismic shift. It was a huge colliding of those two universes. Uh, to answer, you asked, is there more money? To so, I mean, in addition to this process in the last few years, you have to understand that four judges released the directors, okay, four. So some of them wouldn't even listen to the evidence that we brought against the directors. So that is what determined the amount of money that we were allotted, okay? And because of the bankruptcy, we had to do it this way. And there was only, they only left three cases in which we could try for, through this class action. But the three of us decided it is not about the three of us, it is about the collective us. And so again, I am proud to say that myself included fought so that everyone could get something. As big or small as that is, I can tell you honestly, we would have done it for no money because we wanted to make the world a better place for our kids and their kids and so on. Thank you. 
I'm glad he's supportive of the decision, and I hope he looks in the mirror and realizes that he belongs in jail, too, for all of the women he abused for so many years. All right, with that, um, we're going to... Can I ask one more? Is that okay? Sure. Forgive, and this may have been discussed already. If it was, forgive me. Uh, but the, the criminal prosecution looming in Los Angeles, is there a sense that that will accomplish something further? Is it worth going through the pain again? I see nodding heads. Let's hear voices to go with the nodding heads. <laughs> there are new women, new, there'll be new uh, witnesses. And one of them um, was 16 at the time, so yes. No, the, we have, we have um, this is about the fight that, that we have going forward, the momentum that we're getting and gaining every day. Um, so yes, we definitely want to keep fighting. Um, LA, London, whatever comes up. I think uh, everything that's happened in regards to Harvey Weinstein in the past two plus years has created, um, it has resonated around the world. So yes, we are going to continue this conversation and there are going to be new things that come to light and, you know, he's going to be held accountable for more of the crimes that he's committed against women and um, we're not going to stop talking about it. So yes. Because 108 women came forward. That's 108 and more criminal acts. And there are many more women who chose not to come forward. So that's why as well. All right. For real now, thank you guys all for coming. Um, if you guys have any additional questions, you can email um, any of them through us at sb at skdnick.com. Um, it's the email address that you should have gotten the advisory from, sb at skdknick.com. These women are going to be here if you want to do some one-on-ones. I'm sure some of them would love to do that. Um, thank you guys all for coming again. It was really great that you all showed up. Yeah, let's take a quick photo. Guys, get in. I know, right? Ashley.